Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorio. So last night I was having a very interesting conversation with uh, one of the UK's leading battlefield archaeologists and um, I found myself engaged in a rant, uh, which I often do when I'm talking with people and in fact often I often do on this video. So I apologise for ranting at everyone about certain subjects, but I found myself uh, talking about one thing that I realised I hadn't explicitly um, stated or in a concise manner um, on my channel in a video. So I thought I'd just make a very short video about that. And it is very simply to say, don't blindly trust what historians say without checking the primary evidence yourself. Now, in many cases, it, many of us don't have the means or the time or necessarily the interest or inclination to search out the primary sources. However, if it's a subject you care about, then go and look at the primary sources. And I'm always banging on about primary source, primary source, primary source, okay? The primary source material is where real history comes from. Historians only write interpretations. And worse than that, and this is where my rant comes in, historians since the Victorian period have had an unfortunate habit of repeating myths perpetuated by previous historians. Uh, and so the specific examples I'm going to use are related to English archers in the Hundred Years' War. So there are two facts which are commonly banded around. And you hear archers say it, you hear reenactors say it, and unfortunately you even find historians saying it in history books. One example is 12 arrows a minute. It, it is well known that English archers in the Hundred Years' War could only serve in the, in the King's Army if they could shoot 12 arrows a minute. Where does this come from, this idea? We have searched through all of the primary sources that we know about. Some eminent historians have said this 12 arrows a minute thing, or at least alluded to that there was a speed of shooting requirement for serving in the English Army. Now, I'm not saying it's not true. It may have been true, but where's the source to support it? Um, something could be true, but we can't say it's true if there's no evidence for it. Um, and as far as I'm aware, and anybody else that I've ever spoken to, including people who write about archery and research archery and the Hundred Years' War and know vast amounts about the primary sources of that period, um, Nobody is able to find this mythical primary source that says that English archers had to be able to shoot 12 arrows per minute. If you know where it is, I would be delighted to be told. Um, as I said, I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just that I've never been able to find any primary source that says that. And yet, countless historians in numerous books have said, repeated again and again and again, what previous historians have said, that English archers had to be able to shoot 12 arrows a minute. We don't know that, okay? So stop repeating it, please. Um, the other point is this, or this, or maybe that if you're John Lennon, but Churchill, okay? This apparently, according to, again, according to thousands of archers all over the world who know that this is true, uh, and according to probably millions of reenactors who are certain this is true, this sign, which we might use to mean bugger off or something like that, typically English, uh, the Americans would do that, Would yeah, they would flip you the bird, I believe you say. Um, this means go away or sod off. Um, however, it comes from English archers, because when French, uh, when the French captured English archers, they would sever the two fingers of the English archer so that they could never draw a bowstring against France again. Really? Where's your primary source for this? Again, there's no primary source for this. It may have been Sir Walter Scott uh, who, who originated this idea in the 19th century, and certainly Winston Churchill in the Second World War um, very cleverly made this into a, a mythical, an urban legend English symbol of defiance, um, uh, and used it for propaganda purposes in the Second World War. Um, and Churchill probably actually did more than anyone else to perpetuate this myth that this comes from English archers. But the fact of the matter is there is no, as far as I have ever seen and as far as any researcher that I've ever spoken to has ever seen, any primary source material for this being a sort of uh, or defiance symbol by English archers. And in fact, 
As far as I'm aware, there are no records whatsoever of the French severing two fingers off an English archer. Just think about this for a second. If you captured an English archer and you wanted to sort of prevent them from ever fighting against you again, wouldn't you just kill them? Why would you, why would you just cut off their fingers? Anyway, something to think about there. So there we go, guys. The message is don't blindly trust historians. Certainly don't blindly trust reenactors or archers or HEMA people. Um, trust the primary sources. And even then, don't always trust the primary sources. Be questioning of context. There we go. There's my magic word. Uh, and, uh, you know, drill into the primary sources and compare them with other primary sources. But primary source material is where history comes from. History doesn't come from historians. Cheers guys. Click subscribe now and also follow us on Facebook.